Hello, I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, and in this video, I will be talking to you more about 10 essential public health services. Now, for starters, this is a framework that I find to be fundamental in understanding public health. When you're thinking about various topics and how to narrow down these into um, understanding and articulating this um, in the context of the discipline of public health, um, it's important to understand uh, what these services are. And as it so happens that more recently, uh, this framework has been updated. And so at the center of it all um, is equity. Um, and I'm going to go a little bit more into what I mean about that uh, within the context of the framework. So what are the 10 essential public health services? Um, I think it's important to go over them, but uh, let's, let's discuss about what it does. Um, well, it is there to protect but not only protect, promote the health of all people in all communities. So the 10 essential public health services, it actually provides a unique framework for public health to protect and promote the health of all people. So to achieve optimal health for all, the essential public health services is actually there to actively promote policies, systems and services that enable good health and seek to remove obstacles and systemic and structural barriers. Here is the important key component of this. The structural barriers that is pointed out here are not only poverty, but also racism and gender discrimination and other systemic and structural barriers. So these forms of oppression, these have resulted in health inequities. So everyone should have a fair and just opportunity to achieve good health and overall well-being. So this is really important. And um, all of these obstacles, all of these forms of oppression are unacceptable. And public health services is one way to address these important barriers. So now let's talk about the actual services. And what I've done here is not only have I listed them, but I've actually color coded them by um, what category uh, this is in. So um, red, green, and then purple are in three categories. So the first two categories, the first two services I'll list here. So the first one is assess and monitor population health status, factors that influence health, and community needs and assets. So what's important to point out here is that not only are you assessing, and it, it's, it's not only in one point in time, but you continue to monitor the population health status in multiple times in a whole time frame. So then once you're done with assessing and monitoring population health, then you have to go into investigating, diagnosing, and then addressing the health problems and hazards affecting the population. So these are the two services that you need to start, start with before you go into the next two. So, so the next ones are communicating effectively to inform and educate people, and then strengthen, support, and mobilize communities and partnerships to improve health. And then finally, create, champion, and implement policies, plans, and laws that impact health. So what's important in this section is to understand that not only is it important to communicate effectively, but the eventual goal really is to create and what you have created, champion all of these things in the implementation of policy. So the eventual goal, and I've, I've talked about this a lot um, in, in many of my uh, uh, previous webinars where I, I discuss the need to implement policy um, when you have uh, created uh, some sort of intervention or partnership. So let's take a look at an animated version of this. 
Um, so instead of actually these appearing, we're going to see them uh, be removed from the slide. So as you see these, uh, focus on these and, and then see these be removed. Okay, so what are the five additional objectives? Now, these are going to appear the other way around. So the first one is utilize legal and regulatory actions designed to improve and protect the public's health. So the reason I started with this one is because this is actually the ending of the last set of objectives. So by using the legal and regulatory actions designed to improve and protect the public's health, what are you doing? You're actually um, then assuring an effective system that enables equitable access to the individual services and care needed to be healthy. Um, so equitable access is extremely important because when you have disparities in access, when you have poor communities that don't have as much access, then inevitably that leads to poor health outcomes. So assuring this effective system is one way that you can um, ensure that public health is actually being implemented. So, so the next thing is building and supporting a diverse and skilled public health workforce. So not only is it important to have multiple skill sets um, that people, teams bring to the table, but it's important that there is diversity um, in, um, in, in terms of gender diversity. Um, in, in, in terms of um, age diversity, in, in terms of um, uh, understanding racial diversity, um, ethnic ver uh, racial ethnic diversity, um, all of these uh, need to be addressed uh, when uh, providing consulting or understanding for uh, implementation of uh, interventions. So then you can use all of these um, all of these, uh, the workforce, the equitable access, then to improve and innovate public health functions through ongoing evaluation, research, and continuous quality improvement. So finally, building and maintaining. When all of these have been achieved, then ideally you'll have built and maintain a strong organizational infrastructure for public health. So now that I've explained this kind of in um, terms of uh, verbiage, um, and I encourage you to go through all of that term, all of those terminology, and uh, carefully go through um, each of the objectives, each of the ten objectives, um, and then what I've done is categorize this according to first assessment. And so in, when you're conducting assessment, um, you assess and monitor population health and investigate, diagnose, and uh, address um, health hazards and root causes. So this is where you're trying to get to the very root of the matter to understand better um, what is the population health issue or problem. So uh, for instance, uh, a medical practitioner would be uh, taking the pulse of the patient. This is kind of uh, where, where uh, public health practitioners are going into the community and taking a pulse and trying to understand and see where the health stands uh, currently and then diagnose what is going on. And, and then ideally address and uh, get to the ho hopefully the underlying cause, the, the social root cause of of the issue. Uh, so in this slide, we focus on policy development and what is going on here. Um, we went over assessment already in the last slide. So what goes on in policy development if you focus? Um, there's there's five things going on. So you're communicating effectively to inform and educate. Um, uh, that is very important. Health communication has uh, it turned out to be key, um, especially with uh, social media, um, but, but also it's important to strengthen support and mobilize communities and partnerships. So um, one of the things that happens with NHANES is the mobile, mobile examination centers. So the mobile examination centers are used to kind of collect all the data for the community um, at once. 
And then according to what is collected, um, this can be used to create programs um, and, and provide uh, more support for the programs that support the areas uh, that may be lacking. So if there's an um, area like food insecurity that needs more attention within a community, then there could be more um, funding that could go towards these. But once these programs are made, it's important not only to create them, but champion and implement the policies to be able to make sure that these programs stay afloat. Um, and so, so much so also it's important to understand the legal and regulatory actions that are surrounding it. Thank you for listening.